Hello, I'm Bear in a Backpack, and today we're going to be looking at Axiom Verge. Axiom Verge is a Metroidvania-style 2D side-scrolling action-adventure game developed independently by Thomas Happ Games, published by Sony Interactive Entertainment. Well, in Axiom Verge, you play as Trace, a researcher at a New Mexico research facility who, during a routine experiment, is actually knocked unconscious by an explosion caused by the experiment that actually takes out the facility he's working in. When he awakes, he is no longer on Earth, but he's actually in Sudra, an alien world. Shortly after waking up, Trace is greeted by an unknown voice, who we later find out belongs to Elsa Nova, who is a Rusalki, a race of large mechanical humanoids integrated into the world of Sudra. After talking to Elsa Nova more, Trace learns that an evil entity by the name of Athetos seeks to destroy the Rusalki, and if he succeeds will mean that Trace can no longer return home. So, if Trace ever wants to go back to Earth, he must destroy Athetos and save the Rusalki. The game mechanics of Axiom Verge are very much as you would assume they would be for a Metroidvania-style game. You can move around and shoot up, down, left, right in the diagonals, and you can actually remain stationary and shoot at the same time. Since the movement controls are one and the same with the aiming controls, this is actually very helpful if you don't want to go running around while shooting and end up running off a cliff or something. In addition to the combat, there's a lot of platforming that must be done to get around Sudra. You'll have to jump from platform to platform, and really there's a, quite a few times where you'll actually have to use jumping in addition to your item abilities to get from place to place. To aid in navigating throughout the world of Sudra, you are given a mini-map that you can use to figure out where you have and have not been, as well as an overall worldwide map that you can see each and every sector that makes up the entire world, as well as the individual rooms within each sector. Using this, you can figure out, again, where you have and have not been, as well as kind of planning out where you want to go next. As you're traveling around the world of Sudra, you'll also run into many, many types of enemies. There are so many different types of enemies that you have to really get to know each and every type to figure out what the best way to approach them is. For instance, there's some enemies that simply just kind of cling to the wall and kind of mind their own business, but if you touch them, you will take damage. Whereas there's also enemies that will actively try to murder you such as the enemies that will fire things at you, such as this weird mushroom thing here, whatever that is. It fires little balls of energy at you that can damage you, but is relatively easy to take out. As you defeat enemies, some of them will drop health orbs, which are extremely important items in Axiom Verge, as your character has a life bar that does not regenerate. So you will need to collect health orbs to heal while you're playing the game, or retreat to a save station to fully heal if need be. The save stations spread throughout the map allow you to save your game, refill your health, and also serve as a respawn point in the eventuality that you will eventually die. You will probably die and eventually you will be respawned at one of these save stations. Now an unfortunate part is that you will respawn at the save station you saved at last, which means if you go journeying from sector to sector and end up 30 rooms away from the last save station, you're going all the way back there, which means you're going to have to backtrack all the way to where you were. So it's always a good rule of thumb to not avoid a save station. If you go past one, just take the time, save at it, and move on. It'll be much easier in the long run and save you a lot of hassle later. As you're traveling around Sudra, you'll find that you will often come into contact with new weapons, items, and abilities that you'll usually find kind of spread out throughout the world. Now, a lot of these items will allow you to reach parts of the world that you weren't previously able to access, such as the grappling hook, which allows you to connect to a ceiling or other object above you and swing around to reach items that you may not have been able to reach before just by jumping. Aside from the normal enemies, you will come into contact with bosses throughout the dungeon as well. Now, as you're moving along, you'll find a room that has two exits. One will go to a save station, and one marked by a red tube will be the one that leads to a boss. Now when you enter the boss room, you don't really see much of anything, but then suddenly you hear this monstrous growl that really gets your attention, and then suddenly you're faced with a boss. It just kind of appears, and it's really kind of terrifying the first couple times it happens, especially because the bosses just tend to get bigger and bigger and more threatening every single time. Now the last part of gameplay I'd like to talk about is traveling around the map. In Axiom Verge, there's no teleport, there's no warp, there's no quick travel system. The majority of the time, you're going to be running around from room to room, from sector to sector, trying to get where you need to go next. Now, yeah, there are some sectors that connect to each other fairly well. In fact, there's an entire middle section that effectively serves as a quick travel, but you're still going to have to walk through it all the way through to get to sector one or two, depending on where you want to be. It still takes quite a bit of time. 
And in addition, this sector isn't actually open until middle to late game. So in the early portion of the game, you're still going to have to go around chamber to chamber trying to get to where you want to be. Now, this wouldn't be so bad if there wasn't so much backtracking. It's, it's fairly good on this, but there are still times where you have to go back 20 or more rooms to get to a place that your item now allows you to access. So on that front, it's kind of unfortunate. At this point, I want to talk about the soundtrack of Axiom Verge. Now, I'm a big fan of electronic music in general, and the fact that Axiom Verge has a retro electronic style of music really hits home for me. I mean, it does a really good job of fitting to the look and feel of the game, and its heavy bass really drives the beat along and kind of pushes the tempo of the game. I mean, really, even the environment can't help but move with the beat. I mean, just look at that. I mean, we've got Disco Sperm over here dancing along with the beat, and we've got these little guys clinging to the walls just hopping along with it. It's actually quite fun. It, it brings a lot of life to the game and makes it a lot more fun. Now, the musical score also gives a unique personality to each of the sectors because each one has its own unique song. And warm settings are a little more energetic, almost hectic, and colder settings have more calm and peaceful synths highlighting them. Now there's a lot of tension that's brought about by the music and this leads to a sense of unease and mystery throughout the game. In addition, the music complements the boss fights really well and makes them sound more epic and meaningful. Now to talk a little bit about the graphics of Axiom Verge, we really do have to hit on the fact that it really does harness a retro style in pretty much every way, shape, and form. The art itself is indeed a retro art style that draws a lot of inspiration from games like Metroid, Castlevania, things of that type, and that really kind of clues in the Metroidvania description of the game. The characters' communications to one another are shown in speech boxes that show who's speaking and really involves no voice acting other than the little bleeps and bloops that make up the character speech. Now, there's a ton of detail within the characters, the enemies, the environments. In the environments, there's little bits of, let's say we're going through the fungus environment. So there's little mushrooms on the sides of the walls. Some of the platforms you jump on are actually just giant mushrooms, things of that nature. As for the enemies, there's a lot of detail in their body types, the models you know, for the characters themselves, as well as the way they move, the way, let's say it has a, you know, it's an enemy that has a few arms, they'll move around with it, and including your character as well, where when you're moving around, you are at times wearing like a lab coat, so the lab coat will be flowing around, and your long curly hair will actually be moving around with you as well, so there's a lot of dynamic movement that the game captures pretty well in the way it does its graphics. So at this point we're going to talk a little bit about the pros and cons of Axiom Verge, and we're going to start with the pros. So for one, it's really challenging and it's a lot of fun really, it's a lot of fun kind of trying to succeed through all the different platforming aspects of the game and being able to defeat all the enemies in combat, especially some of the bosses, because as you go along the bosses get harder and harder and harder. It's quite a challenge to defeat them. In addition, the retro art style is a lot of fun. It brings back a lot of memories and it's refreshing. There's also a wide variety of weapons and items that you can use, from grappling hooks to a little drone that you can control to reach areas that you can't access yourself, as well as weapons that do a variety of different types of damage and have different effects for each one of them. The musical score has a ton of power, as mentioned before, and it's one of my favorite things about the game. In addition, the story itself, without revealing too much, is very complex and quite enthralling, if I must say so myself. There's a lot to it, and there's a lot of characters and a lot of depth to it. The sound design is very, very good for the sound effects. It definitely creates an immersive feeling within the game that keeps you hooked on the game and keeps you wanting to play more to kind of hear more of the world and get a little better feel of what you're doing. The visual effects are also well done. There's even distortion effects for when your round hits a wall, kind of like a heat distortion effect. And there's, there's lots of detail in the characters, the enemies, the environments. Lots and lots of time was put into the visual aspect of this game. And finally, there's a large amount of content for the money. You will play this game for quite a long time, and even if you take the traveling portions out, which admittedly are a hindrance, but we'll talk about that in a minute, um, you, get, you definitely get your time's worth out of this. You will be playing this for quite a long time, and there's a lot to it. So now we do have to talk about the cons. So, as I said, there's a lot of backtracking. I mean so much backtracking. Now, they did a fairly good job of trying to 
uh, put this in a way such that you don't have to do a lot of backtracking, such as like making it that you can't actually get back to the area you already were until you get the item you need to do things back there. But that being said, even if you're isolated to a couple sectors, that's still 10 plus rooms you have to go through or more to get from place to place. It's It can be quite a hindrance. And kind of expounding upon that, the second con is that it's a huge map with no quick travel. And yeah, with, with no ability to travel quickly or warp or teleport to different parts of the map, it really is very time consuming. I mean, I kid you not, it took 10 minutes to get from the right side of the map to the left side of the map, just, just in travel time. I mean, yeah, there's some fighting in there just to get through enemies, but it takes quite a long time. And in addition to that, there is sometimes a lack of direction. You're not really sure where to go. And I realize part of this is just the exploration side of it. You're supposed to explore, learn, do, see, that kind of thing. But at times this can get frustrating, especially when it takes so long to get around the map. And finally, there's not really a lot of replayability. The speed run mode kind of helps with this, but once you beat the game, that's kind of it. But I mean, this really isn't too bad because as we said in the pros, there's a lot of content there though so you're not really like losing out or anything it's just that you're not going to be able to replay it again and again and again and get a new experience every time you kind of kind of one and done now let's get down to the ratings for gameplay i give axiom verge 7.5 out of 10 for story i give it 8 out of 10 for sound 9 out of 10 for graphics also 9 out of 10 and for content versus cost I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. So again, kind of suffering from the replayability side, but still there's a lot there for your money. Overall, I give Axiom Verge an 8.1 out of 10. If exploring a strange alien world and putting an end to weird biomechanical monstrosity seems right up your alley, you can go to Axiom Verge's Steam page and purchase the game there. Additionally, Axiom Verge is also available for PlayStation 4, Xbox One, PlayStation Vita, Wii U, Linux, and Mac. Well that's it for this review, if you've enjoyed this review please put a like or comment down below and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more reviews like this in the future as well as other gaming content.